Nothing is more vital to the gospel than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If Christ is not risen, our faith is vain, the gospel has no power, and our labor for the Lord is useless. Meditate deeply on these truths this week as Malachi Herbster encourages every believer to refocus on the resurrection. Well, good morning and welcome back to the Walk Talks podcast. Uh, This is Malachi Herbster and I just want to express how thrilled I am to be with you all this week and I trust that you had a great uh, Easter Sunday celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is risen indeed, praise the Lord, and that is what gives us um, salvation and what gives us purpose in life and what gives us um, ultimately eternal life. And I pray that our lives will be lived differently as a result of the resurrection of our Lord, of Jesus Christ. And really, I want to speak to that end in our Walk Talks series uh, this week and how the resurrection changes things, how the resurrection changes things in our lives. Today, I want to focus in on the idea that the resurrection ought to cause us to sing praises and to worship and to rejoice the heart attitude of the resurrection. You know, as I was thinking about the events after the resurrection, I was reading through the different accounts and uh, the various gospels, and um, I was I was drawn to John's gospel, and um, that account is uh, is written in and really in chapters nineteen through twenty. And I couldn't help but think of those who would have looked on and saw Jesus Christ, their Lord, their Savior, their friend, their comforter, the one who they loved, the one who healed, the miracle worker, their protector, die on a cross and experience pain and suffering and ridicule and mockery like nobody should ever receive, yet for that to be their Lord and and for them to understand that this is not a place for Jesus Christ. This is a place for a criminal and Jesus Christ is the furthest thing from that. And imagine with me just putting yourself in the shoes of somebody like that, of one of the disciples or uh, or Mary Imagine watching your son die on the cross and the the heartbreak and how that would really just affect the way that you live your life. And obviously, you know of the prophecies that are foretold, but imagine being there and watching the one you love, the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, our Lord, dying on the cross for you and for me. I don't know, but just that thought right there changes me. Just that thought right there causes me to live my life in a different way. Causes me to say, if Jesus Christ can suffer all those things for me, can't I suffer things for Christ today? It puts things in great perspective. But as I was thinking through that, um, obviously Jesus Christ died on the cross and he was buried and and he, he rose again a few days later, but I really want us to focus in on one specific character uh, today. And I think there's some some great truths that we can glean um, from this individual. So I can direct your attention to um, John uh, chapter 20. Uh, The Bible says, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher. I want to pause there. Mary came to the tomb early. This insinuates that she she was she was coming to the tomb as soon as she woke up. It was the first thing on her mind. Jesus and his state and his body and his tomb, the place where he lay, was a high priority to her. I think there's some truth to that for us today that that Jesus ought to be our first priority in the day. Are you running to the tomb today? Are you running to see and and find Jesus Christ? So she ran into the sepulchre when it was yet dark. 
and she saw the stone that was t- taken away from the sepulcher. So, so envision that she she gets there to the tomb, sees that the stone is rolled away, and she ran and cometh Simon Peter and the other disciple. So she ran and grabbed uh, Peter and the other disciple John, whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, They have taken the lo- the Lord from the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went. And the, un- and the other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So now we have Mary Magdalene, Simon, Simon Peter, and John at the tomb. They both ran together, the disciples, and, um, and John did outrun Peter, and he came first to the sepulcher. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet he went not in. Then Peter comes in, and I love this, following him, and he went into the sepulcher. He took it a step further and see if that the linen cloths lie. Obviously, Jesus had left his garments there, praise the Lord. He is risen. He conquered death, and that is a great example to us there and a great sign to us that Jesus Christ is the conqueror of sin and of death. And and then um, they... Uh, they saw the clothes lying there, the, the linens lying there, and they, they went away and they ran and, and, and probably seeking to try to find help, thinking somebody stole the body of Jesus Christ. But yet I want us, I want to direct your attention down to verse 11. The Bible says, but Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. She stayed there for a little while and weeping because of the fact that she didn't know where her Lord was. And then obviously we know the story, uh, the, the angels come and ask her, why is she weeping? And, and she responds that the body of the Lord um, has been taken and she doesn't know where they have put it. And then, and then in verse 14 there, uh, a man is standing there that she knew not and she recognized not, but it was obviously our Lord Jesus Christ, and said unto her in verse 15, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? And she thought that maybe this was somebody being smart. And so she kind of responds smartly back. And then in verse 16, Jesus calls her by name and says, Mary. And she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabbani, which is to say, Master. And she acknowledges him as her teacher and, and submits herself unto the Lord, even at that time. And Jesus said unto her a couple of different things, you know, touch me not for I have not yet ascended up into my father. And, and Mary came and she went back and she told the disciples, and we know this story, she runs back and she says, Jesus, and imagine this, imagine this moment with me, friends, Mary running into a group of men of these disciples, all of whom love the Lord dearly and telling them, I have seen Jesus. And, and some of them kind of thinking that she is crazy. And, and yet it was the truth. And, and Jesus was alive. And she told him that, and that we are going to see him again. And, and then soon thereafter, um, we know the story. They're in, the, in that in that room, and um, and Jesus appears. Jesus Christ appears to these to the disciples and says, "Peace be unto you." And in verse twenty of uh, chapter twenty here in in John, and when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. And I love this because Christ shows to the disciples and and proves to the disciples that he is who he says that he is. It was so amazing because Jesus comes into that room and and greets them with, with peace, says, peace be unto you. And then says, I am he, I am Jesus. I have done what I have set out to do. And I almost get the goosebumps and the chills when I, when I, when I read this passage and when I just think about 
the life that these disciples lived for the Lord, that Mary even lived for the Lord, and how Christ had changed Mary Magdalene's life. You know, she was previously possessed by by demons, and and the Lord cast those out. And how how these people had been changed by Jesus's life, and He comes to them and He says, "Peace be unto you." And then their faith is made sight. The thing that they have given their lives to, the, the the work that they have done for Christ, the work that they have seen Christ do for them is made sight. It's amazing. And, and their faith was confirmed, I believe, at that point. And then, and then the Bible says that they were glad. They were glad to see the Lord, obviously, because they saw that their friend, the one who they loved, their, their teacher, their rabbi, as Mary says, is alive and, and he has conquered sin and he has conquered death. And obviously they knew what that meant. They knew what that meant at that moment, that all that Jesus has taught, all that Jesus has prophesied, all the prophecies are true, all that is to come. And, and their, their faith was made sight and their faith was strengthened and their joy was raised. And they rejoiced in that moment for they knew who their savior was. They knew Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. He has come to conquer sin and to conquer death. And friends, this ought to be our response today, that we would rest in the fact that Jesus is still alive and he is still on the throne and his death is just as capable today as it was it, as it as it was before and his resurrection was just as is just as capable today as it was 2000 some years ago and this ought to cause us to live our lives differently to rejoice and for our faith to grow in Christ and for us to be glad and exceeding and abundantly rejoicing in the Lord and it really ought to have us have the heart of Isaiah 25 and verse 1 and we'll close with this, where the Lord, where the Bible says, O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. For thou hast done wonderful things. Christian, friend, I pray that today you will praise the Lord, that our hearts will be directed in thankfulness and thanksgiving and praise and worship to the one who died and he rose again for you and for me. He is risen. Thanks for being part of Walk Talks today by listening and subscribing to our podcast. Follow us on social media to get sneak peeks at future episodes and to share your favorites with others who would benefit as well. We hope your heart has been enriched by God's word to take your next step in following Christ. Thank you.